On this episode of Big Boys Don't Cry, we discuss Grease and Grease 2. You don't have to have seen either film to enjoy the podcast, but if you do listen without having seen them, just be aware that we might discuss elements of the plot. There might be light spoilers. Enjoy. I got chills, they're multiplying, and I'm losing control, cause the podcast we're supplying, it's electrifying. You better shape up, cause I need discourse, that'll keep me satisfied. Hello. (laughs) That's good, I like that. We didn't even plan that. Yeah, no planning whatsoever. Just thought I'd throw in a little something extra at the end. Love it. We've never really properly duetted on the songs that we do, have we? No. I mean, I just did a little little ooh, ooh, ooh there, but I think everyone will appreciate that. Yeah, it's it's interesting, actually. We never have, even though we've been playing music together for pretty much a decade now, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, that makes me feel old. (laughs) In a good way. <laughs> in a good way. It's uh, yeah, good collaboration. But yeah, we've never really done duets. It's always been one backing for the other, or backing at the same band as we do at the moment, occasionally. Yeah, it's just hard to do that stuff over um, the Google Meet, isn't it? It is. It is. You've always got that slight delay. You'll have to do something very ambient, um, where structure's not as important a thing. Yeah, where it doesn't it doesn't actually matter how long you hold a note for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll do a, a very loose cocktail twins type band. Yeah, or a, a sort of noise noisescape thing. Yeah, yeah. We could, yeah, uh, we'll be we'll be the a cappella version of Sun Zero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A cappella drone bands. There aren't enough of those, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, sort of I mean, that, my, that could my be, bloody valentine thing maybe <laughs> that could be quite interesting if you had a loop pedal um and just did lots of weird vocal noises and then dispersed yeah. that or almost using that as an additional instrument or maybe even as percussion it would well i've done that once before well. and you know how it turned out is that when you just farted into a microphone and just well no that's it, it that's every boxed, week on this show <laughs> beatboxed over it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you've heard that song, um, Oedipus Fucks His Dad Now, yeah? <laughs> I have, yes. Yeah. That, that was my last foray into that kind of music. And I think it went well. I'll see if I can find the file I can append it to the end of this show. It's like a, a dance <laughs> hit, but with sort of hooting vocals. I, and yeah. I have not heard that in so long. Please find it. I will find it. <laughs> it's a very important meditation on classical literature. Yeah, exactly. And owls. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's it's, yeah. it's quite something, quite something. But, the, you know, all these restrictions on music are going to be lifted soon, so it'll be fine. We yeah, have a roadmap we'll, out of lockdown. We we do. We can all go get incredibly sick at a Weatherspoons. Yeah. And I, for one, cannot wait. <laughs> I know you, you do that every week. <laughs> I would do. I would do. Um, I've I've been resorting to replacing that with getting drunk in my own home, whilst putting on a uh, video on YouTube of people talking inane bullshit. Yeah, for for ten hours, and with me um, using an app to send you milk direct to your house, <laughs> <laughs> interspersed with um, just other samples of like traffic in the background, which you always get at a spoons, don't you? Yeah. They're always by somewhere that gets a lot of traffic. People always drive cars in through the window. They shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, uh, there's always people with little little scale extra extracts they pull out. <laughs> it's a notorious problem in weather spoons. I think the trouble is that all of those people are seeing Grease, and they're trying to emulate Grease Lightning. The very, you know, yeah. con- popular contemporary film Grease. <laughs> popular contemporary film Grease. So... Greece was your pick. It was, yeah. And what 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 brought you to choose Greece? Was there a specific request or there wasn't just a request? A moment of inspiration? No, I I have no idea. It's but it's one that I've been thinking about for a while. My thoughts about it come come and go, you know. 
but I I don't really know. I felt like it was a, a good time because it was different to a lot of the stuff that we talked about recently, a bit older and also a classic in some ways, but, um, you know, a, a musical, obviously, so not like a classic rom-com or something. Just I, I felt like it was something that was different to a lot of what we'd done. But I couldn't tell you, you know, sometimes you just think of something and then there it is. You know, occasionally John Travolta just pops up in your head and there he is. Hi. He's like just that. there getting electrifying. Yeah. Now, John Travolta is someone who's had a very interesting career um, where some of the stuff he's done has been, you know, these really iconic movies. Um, Saturday Night Fever, Grease, obviously. Um, Pulp Fiction by your favourite director. Yeah, my my well. favourite film, yep. You're, you're, have you ever watched Pulp Fiction? I, I have seen it once, yeah. I can't remember that oh. much of it. I remember, it's I, good. I think I it saw it before I realised that Quentin Tarantino was Quentin Tarantino, so I thought that it was okay. <laughs> but, like, it's... When, yeah. you, when you went in blind, you thoroughly enjoyed it, and then your preconceptions clouded your judgement. Exactly, frame. yeah. That's exactly right, yeah. This is probably 15 um, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good film. I haven't watched it in years, but I remember thinking it was it was rather good. Um and uh but yeah, he's he's done some great stuff, you know. Face Off is one of those all-time great movies. Have you ever watched Face Off? You know, I don't think I've ever seen that. Possibly the most Nick Cage Nick Cage performance. Um Face it's slash off. good. Face slash off. John Travolta and Nick Cage swap faces. And so you have this amazing moment at the beginning where they're playing characters. And then they've both got to play the character that's in the movie for about 20 minutes after that. So it's actually two. Well, you get four amazing performances from Nick Cage and John Travolta because they're playing themselves for the, for the better part of the movie. It's very, very good. Um, an incredibly dumb idea for a film done exceptionally well, <laughs> I suppose is the best way of explaining it. Which is the best kind of film, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wild Hogs, of course, the classic Wild Hogs. Uh, feral hogs have, have you ever watched 30 to 50 feral hogs no, i have not apart um, from the ones that are in my backyard every day so so wild hogs has the pleasure of being one of the worst movies i've ever seen at the cinema um tim allen martin lawrence john travolta and william h macy are middle-aged guys although at the time of filming i think they're past middle-aged and they decide they want to form a biker gang called the Wild Hogs in a sort of midlife crisis moment. Um, unfortunately, there is a ban. A, there is another gang already called the Wild Hogs, which take umbrage to this and get angry with them. It's one of the least funny comedies I've ever seen. It has a meta score rating of twenty-seven, um, and I saw it at the cinema, and it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. This came out in two thousand and seven. Did you see it in the the Odeon in Exeter, where we used to bump bump into you? <laughs> no, so I saw it. I saw it in Crawley. Oh, um, the Megaplex. The Megaplex in Crawley. Oh, I love the Megaplex. Um, Is it still there? <laughs> Uh, I think so. I think so. Um, although it is a cine world, so I assume that actually um, Ooh. it's not anymore. Um, yeah. Ouch. I don't know if something else is going to replace it. But uh, yeah, Ray Liotta's it's... in this film. I need to see this film. <laughs> it's it's unbelievably bad. Um, but that's, that's the interesting thing about John Travolta, isn't it? That he's got these incredible movies, and then he's got these terrible films, um, like Gotti, notorious, terrible movie Gotti, Oh God! Um, I totally forgot about that. He what plays goes on in Ship- Gotti. <laughs> he's a he's a mob man. Um, uh, then, but yeah, you've got stuff like American Crime Story where he plays Robert Shapiro and he's brilliant. Um, and uh, but then yeah, you've got you've got terrible stuff like that, and then the Fanatic, which came out, which we do need to talk about at some point. The Fanatic, um, which this is, is the Fred Durst one, <laughs> directed by Fred Durst. <laughs> <laughs> about a, a, a film fan that stalks his favourite action movie star. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, we do, we do need to talk about at some point. Um, but, but yeah, so he's an interesting guy. He's a, had an interesting career. And Grease is kind of the big, big thing that I think he's probably remembered for the most. You know, you've got Saturday Night Fever as well, but Grease is that kind of landmark, you know, sleepover movie um, that everybody remembers. Um, and I hadn't watched Grease in a long time. And I think you said the same as well. You hadn't seen it in a very long time. I don't think I'd seen it since I first saw it, which must have been like a movie night at school. 
um, you know, I was about 11 or 12, I'm thinking, oh, it is funny. He's, he says the word horny and they talk about gangbangs and stuff. I can't <laughs> believe they're showing us this. <laughs> um, and yeah, what, what did you think of it? Were you, were you watching it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was, there were things about it that were, that were dated and quite silly, but I thought it was, it was quite good fun. You know, it's, it's something that's a real nostalgia piece now, but also was nostalgic at the time because it was trading on a nostalgia for the 50s, right? It's set in the 50s. That's so there's right, kind of yeah. layers of nostalgia to it that I think make it quite a nice, as you say, comforting thing. You're watching it going, this is ridiculous. There's basically there's very little plot and the characterization is terrible, but here comes another quite good song that is ingrained in you from having danced to the Grease Mega Mix at every disco. So there it is, you know. <laughs> You can't not enjoy it, can you? Well, yeah, exactly. And and yeah, I think I think it's important to point out that this is a, you know, it's a musical from 1972, uh, at which was at the time kind of at the beginning of the 50s revival era of the 1970s. So people thought, oh, punk is too much. Oh, metal is too much. Let's let's listen to 50s music again and let's 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 stoke the flames of 50s nostalgia um and some of it was very interesting so you had like american graffiti was another early mm. example uh, the the george lucas movie um but then you had comforting dross i suppose is the best way to explain <laughs> it like like happy days for instance yeah um, hey. hey it's the 50s let's forget about all the bad stuff in the 50s and let's think about the good stuff and so grease the grease the musical came out and then in 1978 grease the movie came out based on the musical and this was kind of at the tail end of that so you know you're you're already getting into the that the, nearly in the 80s by that point the 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 craze of of 50s nostalgia was nearly at an end um and but it kind of fitted quite well in that moment and it does have that comforting feel to it um i'm not one that goes for 50s nostalgia though um, no me me neither overall there's i like the cars the cars are nice and you know what i do love is a diner you know can't yeah, get enough yeah. of diners but other than that yeah i don't know if i fully buy into it. and it's an american thing isn't it yeah, well, I, I think of 50s revivalism, um, you know, it's glossing over the horrors of the time period. Um, where are all the black people? Gee whiz, I wonder why there aren't any black people in these movies. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> it might be a bit difficult if there was black people in these movies, if you were talking about the social climate of the 1950s, wouldn't it? Um, but uh, but for me, it's it's kind of the American version of those Brits who look fondly back at the empire or look fondly back at the Victorian mm. era, where it's calling back to this bygone age where things were simpler, ignoring the fact that the vast majority of you are going to be far worse off and there's going to be people that are being put through horrific circumstances. Yeah, it's um, harking back to a golden age that was built on, you know, oppression. Yeah, yeah. Ro Rose-tinted big cars, I suppose. They <laughs> yeah. so all these big cars. Rose-tinted lightning. Um, <laughs> yeah, rose-tinted light lightning. Um, but but it is, it, is a, it is still a good movie. And I think there's the occasional moment of, like, cheekiness in it to do with the, the time period. So... Um, it's almost like a more palatable version of um, uh, oh, what's it called? The uh, Lamp National Lampoon's Animal, Animal House. House. I was going to mention that this came out the same year as Animal House, yeah. which yeah. is amazing because the two. And while I was watching it, I was thinking about Animal House, and I was thinking there's something tonally similar to Animal House, even though that's obviously that's like a vulgar almost a sex comedy isn't it and like yes, but Greece yeah. I was surprised by how vulgar it was and how uh, some of it was yeah it was a, a little bit rude in a way that you think of it as this thing that like you know my mum went to see this film it, she was 13 when it came out and like has a fond memory of going to see it at the cinema and dressing up or whatever and like so you think of it as like a a film I think of it as a film from my parents generation almost and like the whereas I, I don't think of Animal House as that kind of film <laughs> <laughs> no no and and yeah so it is a it's a more palatable version of that obviously animal house i think is early 60s instead but it's got the same kind of yeah atmosphere that same that same kind of retro nostalgia but you're right there's still Put a these... sock in it boy or you'll be out of here like shit through a goose <laughs> there, <there's still laughs> no one kind said that of, in greece they did not um but there's still that kind of cheekiness to it that kind of 
uh, cheeky humor um occasional moments that are quite adult i mean i don't remember there being one of the main characters looking up girl skirts uh yeah from when i was watching it as a kid i don't remember literally that. like crouching under the bench yeah which is not which is still really ext- nasty extremely creepy extremely horrible um but um but yeah it, it does have those kind of darker moments you know you've got the whole thing about is one of the characters pregnant the whole thing is about you know it's a it's a film that's obsessed with sex um it's an incredibly uh, horny film which which makes sense because it's all of these people in their 30s stuck in high school you know yeah there's not a lot that they can do <laughs> it's guys our age playing high schoolers this is the origin of that this is where <laughs> yeah. it comes from this is where it comes from john travolta invented it and on on that subject, did you know that Olivia Newton John was like thirty or thirty one or something, and he was twenty four? Oh, really? Incredible. She was like five or six years older than him. Oh, right. Okay, I did not know that. Um, but um, but yeah. But he was born uh, in his thirties, of course, John Travolta. He's <laughs> born in his thirties. Um, but yeah, it's a um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a raunchy movie. It even uses the word horny, doesn't it? It does. It does. You don't um, want to hear all the horny details. Yes, we do, John Travolta. Um, but 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 what's what's interesting is that it's you know in the public consciousness you don't think of those moments in Greece do you you think of like you said the Greece mega mix playing at a disco or a wedding um, you think of those songs and karaoke yeah yeah you think of that even though some of those songs I mean tell me more is a horrible sleaze anthem isn't it really? <laughs> yeah yeah um, but did you get very far. <laughs> Yeah, did he did he have a car? Did she put up a fight? All yeah, of that kind of stuff. It's a bit just... like it's like that scene in Arrested Development where they sing "Afternoon Delight," isn't it? It's the kind of song that people choose as a duet at karaoke and then instantly regret it when they realise how horny the lyrics are because they've <laughs> yeah, they like, realize... chosen to do a duet with their boss or whatever. It's that kind of song. Yeah, they they realise too late that actually it's a it's a horn anthem. Um, so the yeah. horn factor in Greece is through the roof. I think absolutely massive. Um. And uh, but but what's interesting also is <laughs> it has one of the worst messages in a movie I think ever to to make it to mainstream success in the way that it has and become such a cultural icon because at the end of the day both of the characters are like I'm going to change who I am to be with this other person that I yeah. fancy <laughs> which is brilliant <laughs> yeah um, you know he, he starts running track and wearing yeah, a cardigan he's he's she got, starts he's got his wearing letterman. black and doing a hair up <laughs> yeah. Um, which is which is brilliant um and uh yeah but 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 there is something timeless about it isn't it you know you've got the really bad lip syncing which just gets greater yeah. every time you watch it um the, <laughs> and the dancing's pretty terrible as well there's the dancing is bad as well but there's something quite magical about it isn't there um you know you you think of this and you think of things like rocky horror as well um, mm. which was a few years earlier um where it's all a little bit haphazard, but there's character. See, Rocky um, Horror I, feels so much later to me. I don't know why. Not much later, but I guess Greece is. It's the maybe it's the fifties thing. The, the, the well, layers uh, of nostalgia. Uh, I think, or that's maybe a big it's just Tim Curry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's a big factor. Is that you know, Rocky Horror is a much more subversive movie, in the same way that Animal House is a much more subversive movie. Although it's got these cheekier moments, Greece, it's still on the whole quite vanilla. Um, yeah nobody ends up on double secret probation (laughs) but equally um i think also i think the public consciousness idea of greece is a lot more tame than the real movie and i was surprised you know i i hadn't seen it in bloody years um i'd seen it more recently than you had but i must have been you know maybe early 20s watching it on television when i was bored um it was probably the last time that i watched it Mm. um and you know, you do put out of your mind all of the the, the sneakier moments, um, the the even just the little bits of dialogue here and there between the the, the pink ladies and between the T birds. Um, you kind of you forget about that, and what stays in your mind is the constant memory of being in a horrible club that smells like vomit and booze. Yeah, and the grease mega mix comes on, and you get that feeling of dread in your stomach. That's like, oh god. <laughs> It's going to be terrible for the next three minutes. You know, there's one lad who's just like bopping on the edge of the dance floor kind of a bit quietly through the first one. And as soon as it starts to drop the piano note on Grease Lightning, he's there and his arms are in the air and he's flailing wildly, spilling beer everywhere. And he's knocked you over. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you've got just that horrible fear that comes in when you hear Grease Megamix. It's either your racist uncle's about to start dancing <laughs> or, or, or there's some horrible drunken bastard that's about to ruin your evening. With his massive arms. Um, <laughs> there's massive arms, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you forget that it's a film that has any dialogue at all, right? And the dialogue that is there, a lot of it is, you know, nice and funny quips and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, there's some there's some good little bits and pieces here. It's not a... Um, it's not a, uh, a poorly written movie, I'd say. No. Um, but what's interesting you, as well is that a lot of the dialogue and a lot of the, the tone of it is incredibly mean-spirited. And we've talked about um, mean-spirited films of late, such as 2005's Just Friends, which we just keep coming back to. And that's mean-spirited in a different way. This is sort of culturally mean-spirited, isn't it? Where they're all, like, mocking her for being prim and being a virgin and stuff. And it's just awful, isn't it? Looking back on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a callousness to Greece um, that it makes it interesting that there is this movie that's the 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 main sort of gangs in it the two main groups in it are just inherently bad human beings yeah um and and obviously a lot of it is performative um but it's interesting that you know there isn't a focus on a more prim and proper set of characters in this they're the butt of the joke you know whereas animal house the 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 athletic types of the bullies they're the sort of top dogs of society here they're kind of seen as as underneath the t-birds who are this kind of super powerful group in their own right who kind of dictate the they 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 dictate the way that the school operates almost at times yeah but at the same time they're like anti-jock as well and there's all the scenes where like he's trying to work out what sport he wants to play and he's kind of rubbish at everything which is quite interesting because it goes against the sort of macho thing of the of the t-birds but they're anti-exercise even though somehow john travolta has like the skinniest most svelte body in this film and you're like what the hell man when were you ever like this (laughs) exactly exactly but but at the same time they're not jocks but they still pick on the nerdy kids yeah um good old eugene eugene who's can throw we learn at the end he gets yeah. his little character arc which then disappears entirely for the sequel he's a pitcher why wasn't the sequel about eugene's journey as a baseball pitcher <laughs> genuinely yeah. that is a film that i would watch and if it had great songs so much the better maybe this is a film i need to write <laughs> Yeah, well, they are going to be making, my, my magnum opus. They are making other um, Grease stuff at the moment, so there's going to be a prequel. Are they? Yeah, there's going to be a prequel, apparently. Now? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess it was timely <laughs> of me assume, to choose it. <laughs> I assume they'll recast. You never know. Maybe they'll just <laughs> CG Don Travolta. Oh, they'll um, do that thing they did with Peter Cushing and, like, CGI yeah, him, and him using Fisher. old footage. Yeah. Uh, that's not going to be terrifying. <laughs> it yeah. always works so well. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, apparently, apparently, um, Greece is getting some extra stuff because they've got to keep squeezing this dead horse <laughs> to <laughs> blend analogies. This dead horse from the 50s. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hold on. Let, let me just double check. Let me just, let me just check what's going to happen. So Greece. Because sequels worked out very well for them before. So, uh, a Paramount Plus series called Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies. All right, make it sound like Star Wars, why don't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I hear that Emperor Palpatine's going back to high school. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> He's going to go out with Frenchie. Because nobody yeah. goes out with Frenchie, and I feel bad because she seems really nice. She's the, clearly the nicest character <laughs> across the movies. I mean, obviously, yeah. Olivia Newton John's character is nice as well. Um, but then, yeah, there's also going to be a prequel called Summer Loving. Okay. Which I suppose is about them having their summer loving. Oh, what they actually did on the beach all summer. Yeah, I, that's going to be really exciting to watch. That's going to be horny. Prequels are just the worst idea. There's very few prequels that are actually good. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Are there any prequels that are good? Uh, Star Wars, episode so, yeah, one. Yeah, episode two, Attack much. of the Clones aside, obviously. <laughs> um, you've got, I, I suppose you've got Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom takes place before the events of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. So you could maybe consider that. Um, you've got the retro X-Men movies as well. You could count them. Um, but they're almost like a reboot in their own right. So I'm not sure if they really I think count. anything that's part of like a big comic book universe doesn't count. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, Prometheus. <laughs> Did you ever watch Prometheus? <laughs> no. What's that? So that is the prequel to Alien, which makes zero sense and has nothing to do with Alien. Of course. Um, God, <laughs> Alien is so good. <laughs> Alien and Aliens I rewatched recently, and they hold up so well. They're just incredibly good. I could believe it. Um, I rewatch Alien. But yeah, there, there's then two Alien prequels. There's Prometheus, which has very little to do with Aliens, and the biggest flaw in Prometheus for me, well, there's a lot of flaws. It's quite a bad movie, although it has good moments, is that the plot is incredibly similar to H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's uh, The Mountains of Madness. Right. Uh, Guillermo del Toro was working on a movie of The Mountains of Madness, which is possibly the greatest combination of things ever. Wow. Um, he then had to drop it because Prometheus came out and was basically what that movie was going to be, but bad. Oh, so no. you're not going to see this <laughs> Guillermo del Toro version of the mountains of madness because he was like, I can't make my movie now. It's way too similar to what Prometheus ended up being. Oh um, no, that's because terrible. Because sort of the, the key sort of plot points of Prometheus are kind of similar to the mountains of madness. Um, you've got rise of the planet of the apes. That's a pretty cool. That. It's got a gorilla jumping off a bridge to attack a helicopter. I mean, that, that's worth watching in its own right. I cannot think of Planet of the Apes without just thinking of the Simpsons musical of it. <laughs> it's one of those things where I'd never... I don't think I've ever even seen Planet of the Apes, but like in, it only exists in my consciousness in Simpsons form. Just like the American National Anthem. Oh, say can you say la 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 <laughs> like. It's, it's like that. I, every time anyone mentions Planet of the Apes, I just think of... Dr. Zeus, Dr. Zeus. And, and for, for me, at least, I wish that they'd actually made a full-length musical around Planet of the Apes. I think that would have been so good. Um, if it was written, it's based on a book by a French satirist, that would translate brilliantly to a musical. Yeah, come on. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. Um, and I've just looked up the best prequel movies of all time, and most of them are shit in every single list <laughs> that I've looked at. Um, most of them are there any that you think could qualify as good well apparently the good the bad and the ugly is technically a prequel to the other movies in the dollars trilogy uh, okay um, so that's a very good movie i've not watched it in bloody years because who has four hours to waste watching yeah. a, a movie God. these days you know none of us have that time um we've got to waste two hours and then two hours watching grease and yeah, grease jesus two. christ coming up on two hours and somehow <laughs> still very little plot yeah Somehow still um, the ending of Greece felt extremely abrupt, even though it was quite a long film. <laughs> yeah, well, Did you yeah. not find that? I Yeah, it's suddenly, oh, they're off. There we go. They've resolved their differences. He's she's flying been, into the sky. She's wearing tight pants. He's taken off his cardigan and now they're flying. Um, but, but overall, I, uh, I enjoyed returning to Greece. Did you like the bit where um, they moon? There's a, there's a mooning of course, shot. Of course. And they're um, watching it on TV in the diner and someone goes, oh, I wonder who that is on the right. There's that, there's that very good little bit where the, the principal's talking and it's like, we have pictures of you mooners. And <laughs> even though the pictures aren't of your faces, that doesn't mean we can't identify you. Which is <laughs> just brilliant. Well, speaking um, of someone who was given detention for mooning at school, that is very, very true. <laughs> I didn't realise quite real. Danny Zuko. Yeah, yeah. I used to moon, do a lot of mooning. In my time blue blue mooning to tie into the 50s theme yeah <laughs> um, i forgot how long the hand jive scene is that scene goes on forever <laughs> that's the worst song as well also hand jive sounds like something disgusting for another thing like who jives with their hands what is that and then that that scene just like yeah it was a really long scene it's uh yeah it's really bad it? it's just really yeah. just overall the, i think the songs are really good but that one's rubbish um, but speaking of rubbish songs, shall we talk about Grease 2? <laughs> I don't know what you, you mean when you talk about the song Cool Rider, which appears oh. at first in its like original sort of like rock rock biker anthem form, and then is like softly being played on a saxophone in the background of every other scene between Michelle <laughs> Pfeiffer and the British guy. It's great. It is. It is. A cool Rider, I would say, is one of the better jams of this movie. There is some absolute fucking diabolical songs in Grease 2. So, <laughs> That's Grease, the right word. So, so Grease 2, Grease 2, it came out in 1982. By this point, the 50s revival scene was dead. It was fully dead. Yeah. Why did it exist? 
I think is the main question. There is, it, it was redundant by the time it already arrived in cinemas. It existed to launch um, Michelle Pfeiffer's career. And, and I am grateful for it. And I would say, as much as I'm about to rag on this movie for being extremely bad, Michelle Pfeiffer is very good and fits the movie incredibly well as this kind of blasé um, female gang member. I think she fits the movie quite well and her performance is very good. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think she's fantastic. And when she when she sings Cool Rider, you're like, hey, this might actually be really good. This is this is an anthem. This is great. She's giving it her all. And you truly believe her as well. And like you believe how invested in it she is. But you don't believe anyone else in this film, do you? No, no. This Apart from the real. creepy biology teacher who sings a creepy song about sex. <laughs> so, so the reproduction song that the creepy biology teacher sings and then all of the kids get involved... It's probably the least sexy thing I've ever seen or heard in my life. Yeah. Um, it made my penis shrink and disappear up inside my body. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the only reason that the human race didn't die out from lack of sexual interest after this film came out um, is that thankfully so few people have seen it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if this, if this had been seen by more people, this would have been more devastating than any any nuclear holocaust. I'm worried I might Just, not be able to have any more children. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the movie Children of Men... <laughs> Um, it's not the fact that people can no longer give birth. It's that um, people watch Grease 2 and they just have no interest in sex anymore. Yeah. That's what it is. That's that's the beginning of Children of Men. If you want to make a prequel to Children of Men, hit me up. It's all about someone finding Grease 2 and then putting it online and everyone watches it and goes, oh God. <laughs> I, I Children like, of Men with Ven. I feel like a panda that's just taken ketamine and eaten a big meal. <laughs> No, no interest no interest um <laughs> the song is so bad it comes completely out of nowhere and it's just like you could maybe get away with it if it was like a banging song but it's like half of it is him weirdly singing a biology textbook at the students and then them joining in and making like sort of half-assed innuendos while they jump on desks and it's just like a sort of like i don't even know how to describe it i can't remember how it went but it was a sort of like farty brass trumpety big band song wasn't it <laughs> yeah it's just a sort of production <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's extremely bad lots of people don't go and watch s- it otherwise you won't want to have sex anymore <laughs> lots of people do not look s- this up on youtube no, do not do follow not. the link in the show notes to watch this song on youtube <laughs> the, this this is like watching the video from the ring <laughs> apart from rather than killing you it just <laughs> destroys your sex drive yeah um <laughs> Uh, yeah, lots of people talking about stamen and pollen. I know that if I want to yep. do a horny song, you'd want to talk about stamen. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, it's it's so bad. Um, but there, it's not the only terrible dirge. Uh, you've got creepy bastard in a nuclear bunker trying to convince his girlfriend it's the oh, other so they can have sex. So bad. And yeah, all the all of the bad songs in this are like horny in the wrong way as well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's all creepy horny. Um, and and it's made worse by the fact that the people in this movie, I imagine they're probably not, but they look a lot older, don't they? I mean, you, they look like they're in their thirties in Greece. They look like they're in their forties in Greece too. <laughs> yeah, even though they're different actors, so yeah, you could have got yeah. some properly young people. Michelle Pfeiffer looks kind of the right age. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer looks young. Um, but yeah, the the new T birds genuinely looks like the cast of Wild Hogs. Yes, yeah. <laughs> genuinely them. Um, but um, but I, it does raise an interesting question. So obviously, all of the T birds and the Pink Ladies have graduated from Greece One. So apart how, from Frenchie, apart from Frenchie, um, who's now doing people's hair in a chemistry lab, um, I assume also making drugs. I guess is probably what's going on in there. In the chemistry um, lab. In the chemistry lab. Yeah, um, definitely. But it makes me wonder, what what is the social hierarchy in the world of Greece? How did they pass on the T-Birds jackets to a new generation of T-Birds who are like a couple of years younger? Yeah, that means there's a film in between that we've missed, isn't there? Greece 1.5, where it's like the sort of... We we've graduated, but we need proteges to carry on doing our doing our work. Or really, maybe that was kind of happening in Greece in the background, but it, you didn't know it was going on. And that's the like, can I can I live up to? Can I fill these shoes? I got big shoes to fill, kind of thing with the new young T birds. It's like I need your guidance, Father Travolta, and then they sort of come back and help them for a bit, but they shouldn't really be there because they're 
not in high school anymore but it's like are they actually the high school guys now just like reliving their glory days and not really doing anything they're working at the gas station or whatever and they're washed up and then they come back to high school and sing a song about how they're still horny for high school girls or whatever you know that's the <laughs> film that's in between that's missing in prison yeah exactly um, it's uh yeah i it just makes me think it's like you know somebody has passed down the t-bird jackets and the pink lady jackets to a new generation how has that happened why has that happened who are these people and interestingly enough there was going to be a a little cameo from john travolta and olivia newton john and i think it was going to be that they were going to be running the petrol station um that uh at some point in the movie and you'd see them there and it's like oh yeah they're still together like this is like i think it is like four years later or something like that um but it does it's make me set wonder. in the early 60s and you know yeah. that because they keep mentioning president kennedy <laughs> <laughs> yeah they do um and i think i think it should have ended with um it should have gone over multiple years and ended with them all being shipped off to vietnam shouldn't it yeah yeah like like animal house <laughs> at the end where it <laughs> yeah. says that niedermeyer was killed by his own troops in vietnam <laughs> yes exactly that's what we needed here <laughs> um but uh but yeah it's it just makes me think and, and that's the kind of thing that's never really explored and it does it makes greece feel like a significant cash grab doesn't it in oh the, yeah in that there are the t-birds and the pink ladies again as opposed to just coming up with anything original as opposed to bringing back the original cast it's just frenchy and the 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 principal <laughs> and the coach basically yeah. and eugene <laughs> eugene's back bless him good old eugene um, but it, it's it's just so odd isn't it you're like who are these people did, did they kill them and take their clothes maybe they do did that's that, do you reckon that's what happened they've got bikes um, but but if if the if the original t-birds did hand down and did train up the new t-birds they did a really fucking bad job because how can someone with a motorbike and leathers who listens to rock and roll be such a fucking dweeb as every yeah. single cool character in greece too who constantly tr- they're constantly trying to prove themselves prove that they're not dweebs by being dickheads by like bowling down the wrong lane in the bowling alley where some nuns are bowling <laughs> stuff so it's weird yeah, stuff like that yeah. it's, it's, it's really like odd. nope you guys are still dweebs yeah i mean they're, they're just they're, i've never seen people more needing of a noogie in my <laughs> yeah entire life than the cast of of, of uh, Greece too like Eugene um, probably could flush their head down the toilet yeah if wanted yeah to. I think he's he, a star pitcher on the baseball could. team now you know? he is he is that's our head cannon um yeah Eugene. but but yeah you're right they're constantly trying to prove themselves which isn't something that's happening in Greece in the first one apart from Danny who's trying to prove that he's still oh I'm a sociopath oh <laughs> yeah um, whereas, I'm a sexy sociopath in a leather jacket tell me more tell me more <laughs> <laughs> um whereas here yeah they're just desperate to constantly be seen as being hard men um and then every single chance that they get to try and prove themselves they fail miserably um and basically are just mean bullies to everybody yeah um, but where it's coming across as really insecure yeah and and the end result of that is that you spend an awful lot of time with characters you don't care for you know who likes the t-birds in greece too they're really um, annoying e- even the pink ladies aren't particularly um enjoyable in comparison to the first movie you know they, they've got a little bit of character here and there but they're still just quite unnecessary um no, they're all very sort of two-dimensional aren't they yeah um and There's Michelle- the younger sister one who's like a bit resentful and and bit spunky you know Michelle Pfeiffer's there as the sort of aloof leader, and then Frenchie's there being Frenchie. Yeah, she's the, she's the mentor. Um, yeah, and yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer's good. And then you've got um, I've forgotten the character's name, um, but but yeah, you've got um, the younger one. Is it is it Dolores? Yeah, Dolores. Yeah. Um, who's and the who boys are... who have all got New Jersey names and New Jersey accents, but you don't really even know where it is. <laughs> No, and also they have no personalities separate from one another. They're all just horny, creepy 40-year-old men who are at high school. All paying the same guy to write their essays for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because he's British. Because you know what British guys know how to do is to write essays, because well, we know uh, about history and stuff. We all know about Shakespeare, don't we? Yep. We all so are we... Shakespeare. <laughs> that's, that's what we are. That's what we he's are. inside all of us. Yeah, every single one of us is Shakespeare. Um but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's just a bad movie, isn't it? 
Yes, it is. Although it's very, very funny when they're looking at the jukebox, one of the dumb T-Birds. I think the one who's called The Goose says it's got the greatest hits of B. Thoven. I found that very <laughs> funny. <laughs> and they do like a creepy song that where they say they're going out prowling and it literally means they're like <laughs> literally looking, means for, they're going for out women. looking for women. It's, oh, it's okay. In the grocery store? That's almost as bad as the the sexy biology song, isn't it? Yeah, it is it is, is it nearly worse? as bad. I don't know. You've you've then got the bowling song as well, which is also terrible. Um and the cultural appropriation song at the end. Don't oh yeah, they that. just have a nice Hawaiian luau because why not? Yeah, um, yeah. But there, there's again, there's the occasional funny line. Um, one of the one of the pink ladies when they're in the car driving badly, trying to chase after cool rider. Um, one of them goes, "I'm going to die," and I'm wearing my mother's underwear. Which yeah. is just <laughs> it is quite funny. It did make me think. Oh yeah, that's that's quite a funny line. Um. But, but in general, it's it's not as sharp. The songs are worse. The choreography's not bad. Um, it feels bigger in terms of the group choreography. A lot oh, God. Time. I was going to say, every single dance feels really claustrophobic. It's like yeah. There's a thousand people in a room, especially in the bowling alley one. You're like, they've got a thousand people in a room that definitely has a sign on the <laughs> wall saying max capacity 150 max, standing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but but the, the actual choreography of it all, they, they try to go bigger with that. Um, but it takes away some of the charm, I think, um, which is which is not great. Yeah, it doesn't, it, you know, there's something rough and ready about the first Grease that really, really works because the songs are catchy and the songs in Grease 2 just aren't catchy, apart from Cool Rider, which has obviously been in my head for, for this whole week. But yeah, they all feel like someone who really loved Grease tried to make a sequel to it. It feels like fan fiction almost, doesn't it? Yeah, and the songs really especially feel that way as well, which is kind of an interesting thing, but it feels like a young person who liked it tried to do their own version and didn't quite get there, but made an okay attempt. Yeah, and, and I think it all comes down to the fact that Grease 2 doesn't need to exist. Therefore, the songs don't need to exist. There's no hooks here. There's no one in... There's no character that brings you in. Our main guy is just awful. I'm sorry, but an Englishman turns up at a high school and is like, mm, I am a smart man who plays the piano. I'm going to become a motorcycle rider. You don't even um, think of him as the main guy because he's so boring and forgettable. <laughs> he's just you so think dull. that Johnny Mnemonic or whatever his name is from the, <laughs> the new T-Birds is the main guy because he gets so much screen time of him larking about and being a massive wanker that you're just like, yeah, that guy is surely the main guy. And then it's like, nope, oh, actually it's supposed to be the nice it's British man in the, the cardigan. Nice British man who's going to, again, change his entire personality to try and go out with somebody. Um, so the message of both movies is shy. I would say that maybe Grease 2's message is a little bit better because um, she kind of, it's, it's clear that she like doesn't give a shit about being one of the pink ladies if it means she has to go out with one of the T-Birds. Um, he is at least more, at least there's more build up to him trying to become one of the cool kids instead of just the immediate end at Greece where they're just like, oh shit, I'm just going to change who I am. Bingo, done. Um, he goes and, on a journey to become the cool rider. Yeah, yeah, which I think is maybe a little bit better. You kind of you you can kind of root for him that way because you can see that he's working towards something. You get to see him working on his little motorbike. You get to see him kick the leader of the gang, <laughs> um, which is good. But, but, but again, it's it's... It's kind of tamer as well because you don't have that scene where they're they're driving Thunder Road and he's got the blades on his car and you're like, oh, this is kind of a little bit dangerous. Yeah. Instead, instead, someone accidentally he rides their motorbike into a pond. Um, <laughs> it's just it's just not the same, is it? Um, yeah. There's a bit of kind of the threat of violence in Greece. One is actually quite real and quite visceral, isn't it? Yeah. There's a bit yeah. of flick knife intimidation as well. Yeah. There's a there's a little bit of that here and there, which is actually quite good. Um. Uh, and, and the one thing I would say about Grease 2 in its favour is that it's slightly less slut shamey than the original movie, which I appreciated. Um, yeah. Where where there's this kind of subtext between Johnny Mnemonic, which is now what I'm going to call him. What's his name? It's it's. Um, <laughs> you honestly can't remember. It's something Italian American. It is, it is Johnny Johnny Nogarelli. It is <laughs> Nogarelli, right? Um, yeah. And then I can't remember her name. Is it Paulette? 
Paulette. Yeah. Yeah. Who who they're kind of like, oh, she sleeps around. She sleeps around. But at the end, it's like, I don't care about your history. I like you. Let's hang out and let's let's be boyfriend and girlfriend. And you're like, okay, that's better. <laughs> Slightly. Yeah. You still do far too much of a big deal. Grease of one has does that that whole thing of both slut shaming people for doing anything and then mocking Sandy for being a virgin. Yeah, yeah, um, it, it's the worst of both worlds. Yeah, um, the worst of both worlds. <laughs> whereas, yeah, at least at least Grease two has slightly more of a soul in that regard. But can I again point out where are the fucking black people? Grease two. Yeah. I wonder why you're not showing black people in the early 1960s in your Nostalgia Fest movie. Mm, I wonder why. I wonder why. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not great. It's not great. Um, but we, we have had some some success stories, haven't we? You know, you've got, um, obviously, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. Um, she's great. Little, and she's been in so much stuff. You forget, oh, yeah. I think, how many great films she's been in. And That's how thing, different all those roles have been and how deep a lot of them are. She's great. That's the thing. She's genuinely great. I keep meaning every Halloween to bring up that we should watch What Lies Beneath, um, which is I've a wonderful. It. It's a wonderful spooky movie with her and Harrison Ford, um, where where Sold. they play husband and wife. It's oh, it's so good. Um, but yeah, she's she's been in so much great stuff. Um, I think genuinely one of the most forgotten actors in terms of the quality of her performances. I think she's one of those people that you can watch and whatever she's in you know that her performance is going to be something worth watching like what was the real piece of shit that we watched? new year's eve new year's eve well, her <laughs> storyline was like the only good one yeah terrible movie but her storyline with zach efron genuinely enjoyable to watch and a lot of that is down to her performance um so so yeah kudos to her for for um for doing much better stuff than than grease too um you also, you know, Maxwell Caulfield um, was main British posh guy. He's had a decent career. I was um, not aware well. of him before, I have to say. Um, yeah, so he's, he's had a decent career. He's done lots of stuff. Um, most famously for me was in the Spider-Man animated show that I loved as a kid. I only found this out today. Um, he played Alistair Smythe, who's one of the villains, who turns himself into this horrifying body horror beast with big spikes on his shoulders was this the um, one that was on when we were kids yes yeah i probably watched that yeah so he voiced him in, yeah. uh, in in that show which i only found out about when i was looking up his history but yeah he's he's had a he's had a a good career as has has maxwell caulfield um oh, but right. um yeah so so people have managed to escape um uh, <laughs> they've managed to escape Grease 2's <laughs> orbit apart from Johnny Mnemonic he's still stuck there he's still a T-bird <laughs> he's still, a he's still in high school <laughs> and Frenchie she's still in high school Frenchie's still in high school oh Frenchie um, and, and Christopher McDonald who plays one of the T-birds in this as well I recognise him from various things that I cannot remember <laughs> what they are but he's really familiar to me as like a character actor and other stuff which um, one was he? So he was the tall one. Oh, the um, goose. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, was, I'm looking at it now. He he's goose. in Happy Gilmore. There we go. Yeah. Um, so he's been, he's been in all sorts over the years. Um, so so yeah, it's it's not a death sentence uh, being in this movie. Um, unlike some of the films that we've watched, where people's careers have kind of been ruined by being in a bad movie. It's it's, and I wouldn't necessarily say that it's as bad as people make out. I remember watching it when I was younger and thinking this is a really really bad film. Um, but on rewatch, it's it's a bad movie. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a disaster. No, there are some things about it that are really terrible, but there's there's the kernel of some good stuff in there. The whole Cool Rider thing, I'm I'm down with that. Yeah, Cool Rider is a jam. Um, it would have been yeah. nice if the person playing Cool Rider and being Cool Rider was actually cool. Yeah, I think that would have been good. <laughs> and it uses the same font as the room. In yeah, its opening good. titles, I I don't know what that font is called, but now I see it everywhere, <laughs> and I just associate it with the room. Um, <laughs> what one thing that I think could have worked really well in this movie is if Cool Rider had existed from the beginning, and you had a kind of Spider Man and Mary Jane thing going on, mm. 
And I think that could have worked really well. So, you know, you, well, I'm talking about the, the Tobey Maguire, Sam Raimi movies here. Yeah. Um, where it's the guy who wears the helmet all the time, like a member of Daft Punk. <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's what the new guy want. But, you know, Daft Punk has unfortunately announced they're spinning up. Maybe one of them now is going to go and remake Grease 2 and be yeah. a rider. <laughs> that's why they're splitting up. Yeah. Because of Grease yeah. 2. That's why I chose it. Yeah, you've got insider knowledge. Um, but don't you think, you know, uh, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, they do that really cool thing where where Kirsten Dunst's Mary Jane, she likes Peter Parker, but at the same time, Spider-Man is like, oh, Spider-Man's this hero. And so I think they maybe could have made, they could have made it more dangerous. You've got this nasty gang that isn't just a joke like it is in Greece 2, and instead they're genuinely terrifying. And every so often, this new cool rider turns up and just saves people. Um, yeah. At the same time, there's this nerdy guy who's just transferred in, who's not a Brit. He's just a normal American. He doesn't need yeah. to be from another. country He's just from Greece. a different state. Yeah, Ohio coming, maybe. He's coming from Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and yeah, he's he's kind of nerdy, kind of geeky. He's got a little piano, but secretly yeah. he's also <laughs> a little piano, a little like piano. Schroeder from Peanuts. <laughs> exactly. That's why he's a nerd. He's carrying around this tiny. He carries piano around this everywhere. toy piano with him everywhere. Yeah um uh but but yeah but but secretly he's also cool rider and i think that could have been really interesting if they'd gone down that route a little bit more yeah um, this is the film cool rider this is what it should have been it shouldn't have been greased to at all it should have been cool rider yeah yeah um and I, I i think that could have worked really well if you had more of that not necessarily a mystery about it but more of that tension of of will they find out what's he going to do next how is he going to keep up this facade yeah, and the sort of, how can I tell her it's really me who's the cool rider, which lasts for about two scenes, and then he's at the end he shows up, and he's like, hey, I'm the cool rider, you don't <laughs> hey, mind? And she's wearing, like, no, I I'm like I'm wearing you. this leather vest, and that's it. <laughs> Guess who's cool rider? Um, looking like a member of Nine Inch Nails from 1995. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, jumps over into the luau, March of the Pigs starts playing. <laughs> I'd love to see a 50s version of March of the Pigs. <laughs> All the pigs are all lined up. <laughs> Mr. Pigman, <laughs> show me your pigs. Bum, bum, bum. Make sure they're marching the march of the pigs. Bum, bum, bum. Please turn on your magic pigs. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the T Birds sing that stupid song. Your knees. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> the T-Birds sing that stupid song at the talent show. What is wrong with them? Yeah, fucking losers. The talent they? show is terrible, by the way, and all the stuff that they're doing in the talent show is really bad as well. Yeah, if I was a judge on that talent show, I'd be going full on Simon Cowell. I'm not yep. going to lie. Um, where's Where's Marty McFly playing rock music? Yeah, your kids are going to love it. <laughs> exactly. Why didn't the cool rider come on stage like Meatloaf? I would love it if they did a new... Well, I wouldn't. I'd hate it if they did a new uh, new Back to the Future. It's something that I know is going to happen at some point and it's going to be awful. Because I want to go back. Be... <laughs> back. Back to the future. Um, but but imagine, imagine if they made one back in like the 2010s and he went back in time to the 80s because obviously it's going to be a similar age gap. Yeah. Um, so yeah. rather than going back to the 50s, he goes back to the 80s. <laughs> and then he's there at a DJ set, at, like a summer ball or something. And he goes and puts on Skrillex. And yeah. everyone's just like, what is this? And he goes, your kids are going to love it. And gives a little yeah. wink to the camera. <laughs> yeah. Or puts on like Black Skinhead by Kanye West or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, that's what we want. Well, it's not. It's the complete opposite of what we want. Do not give us this. Yeah. Um, yeah, the kids are gonna love it. <laughs> um, anyway, have you got anything else you want to say about? Just that I enjoy too? bowling, and it made bowling look not fun. <laughs> I'm looking Lord forward to bowling 20. when we can bowl again. I'm not looking forward to bowling. I don't think I'm going to go bowling again, and if until I potentially have kids, if I have kids. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You can't avoid it. You just know you'll get the the kid will be seven or eight. You'll get invited to a bowling party at the Crawley Bowling Plex, and you'll have to go there. <laughs> yeah, the City World bit will be closed down and like probably haunted, and you'll be like, "Can we go in there?" If you're like, "Nope, come in here and do the bowling." I mean, do do you think that that's a quite interesting thing about concepts for future horror movies? 
because, haunted cine world. Well, yeah, because obviously COVID has had such a huge impact on space. Oh god, I mean, we're I about to physical. get a generation of COVID horror films, aren't we? Yeah, I think all well, we've already we've already had a sort of COVID horror film. Um, there's a movie called Host. Um, which is all about these people that normally hang out in real life, but COVID has forced them not to. And they do a seance over Zoom. What? <laughs> and obviously it goes incredibly poorly. It's genuinely a great little movie. It's only about an hour long. It's called Host. That's a ridiculous um, idea, and I love it. It is so, it's genuinely so fucking good. Um, homework for everybody watching this podcast, apart from those of you who don't like horror movies, which is probably most of you who listen to this podcast. But go and watch Host. It's really good. It's really simple, really straightforward. It only lasts about an hour. Um, so it doesn't You don't stop. have to watch Grease 2. You just have to click the link in the show notes to watch Cool Rider. That's all you need to <laughs> That's, see. That is actually all you need to see about, about Grease 2. And by Cool Rider, I mean the film Cool Rider that we just invented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, go, go and watch Host. It's Oh, it's so good. It's really straightforward, gets to the point, doesn't have a lot of subplot, but it, but it it is just yeah, it's a it's a horror movie for the COVID age. But you know, we we are going to have all of these places that close down in, in terms of these physical spaces. You'll have, I imagine, shopping malls. Um, you'll yeah. have cinemas, other big out big spaces. You know, maybe bowling alleys and things like that, which aren't going to really want to be opened up until they get turned into flats which is what eventually all of these things will become because mm. there's no culture only flats that is the future of, of britain um and and i so, love that line in ghostbusters 3 <laughs> exactly exactly um, that reminds me a bit of when i worked in a pub um that was underneath the disused laser quest we used to like you could get into it like through the roof we used to go in there and fuck around that's the kind of place that would be incredibly haunted now wouldn't it yeah, but I, I, well, I think you're probably going to get these horror movies that are like uh, this bowling alley or or this this music venue or this this theatre closed down during COVID. Um, it's going to get turned into flats. Let's go and explore it. Um, but secretly, there's also been a murder there, and now yeah. there's a ghost, and the ghost is going to kill you. You're going to get all those sorts of movies that are going to happen in the next two or three years when it's easier to make movies again. Um, there's going to be a lot of that post covid cinema particularly i think in things like the world of horror where you can really tie into those ideas um yeah so yeah that's my prediction is there's going to be a lot of shit horror movies about a post covid world yep maybe fred durst will make one. Oh, fred durst is definitely going to make one <laughs> maybe john dear, travolta will dear be fred, in it dear fred go and make this movie i dare you no you listen every week <laughs> big fan of rom-coms <laughs> Yeah, if if you don't make this movie, we dare you to make this movie. And if you don't, you you're you're a uh, milk a toast. You're wet milk. <laughs> you are wet milk, Fred Durst. You have a red hat full of milk. That's how wet milk you are. Um, anyway, right. So yeah, have you got anything else you'd like to share about? Uh, about um, Greece and Greece no, I, I I think we covered everything. You don't have to watch Grease too. It's, it's interesting in in the way that bad sequels are interesting the way you just look at it and you think, why did they make this? And the obvious answer is, answer is because they thought they could make a quick buck. Yeah, they thought they could make money out of it. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's as cynical as um, as some sequels. I think maybe there's a little bit of... There's a little bit of love here, isn't there? There's a little yeah. bit of... Um, uh, p- people who made this do care about it a little bit. I wouldn't say they really love it, but they do care about it a little bit. Yeah, for sure. If you if you're curious, if you enjoy Greece and you're curious, then why not give it a whirl? Yeah, I think give but it. Be a go. prepared to never want to have sex again. Don't don't expect a lot. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's it's not great. So I've got a little bit of trivia um for you. So so DD Con explained why Frenchie disappears halfway through. <laughs> two. Um, so the script was unfinished when they began filming um, but the draft they were using still included her character but then they were written out during filming and was told halfway through that she was no longer needed but eventually <laughs> they decided to include her in the final cut ouch um, uh, she described the filming process as rushed, frantic and unorganised um, no, it, it doesn't show in the dance numbers with a thousand people in <laughs> Um, no, definitely not. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer performed her own stunts. Cool. 
um during the 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 romantic motorcycle ride which is cool um nice which yeah fair play uh apparently her and maxwell caulfield did not get along during filming oh um which uh which yeah doesn't necessarily show um uh tom cruise also auditioned for the role of johnny mnemonic no way uh yeah but the director wanted someone older and taller <laughs> Which I think is harsh. But imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine if Tom Cruise showed up in this movie. Wow. Because it's not like Johnny Mnemonic's a big guy. No, He's no. the weediest of the T-Birds. And I think actually that would, that would play off quite well in the movie if this guy was really compensating and was quite short. Yeah, um, that would have actually been cool. Because again, as I said, he got the most screen time. So that might have been an interesting footnote. Yeah, it would have been cool. I, I think maybe that could have elevated it. Could you, if you could imagine an excitable young Tom Cruise? Hmm. Um. Yeah, but the person that they did get to play Johnny Mnemonic, um, Adrian Zmed is his name. Um, still trapped in high school, as previously yeah. revealed. Um, he actually played Danny Zuko in Greece on Broadway. Ah, oh, good for him. Um. So yeah, which explains why his character is kind of just a. Danny Zuko <laughs> clone. Yeah. Maybe that's what happens in Greece 1.5. Maybe they try to clone the T-Birds, um, which is why all of their characters are exactly the same, apart from just compensating. Is the whole cloning thing going wrong, like the fly? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, a, a bad script got into the transporter at the same time as, <laughs> as, as Danny Zuko. And uh, unfortunately... Uh, yeah, they got just the, the lower half of John Travolta's body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, anyways, yeah, that that'll do for for trivia, I think. Um, but uh, but yeah, so how are we gonna how are we gonna rank these these movies? Uh, let's see, well, Greece. Um, how many chills have you got? Oh, I have got a solid fourteen chills. So I yeah. initially had seven chills, but then they were multiplying. So yeah, it went up that's why we two. score out of 20. It was all just leading up to us making a joke about <laughs> chills. Making and a shit joke about <laughs> Greece. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will agree with that. Um, yeah. Greece to... Um, How many terrible wheelies do you do on your motorbike in yeah. the car park of a bowling alley? <laughs> Until you become the cool rider. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I do seven cool wheelies. Yeah, that's a uh, They're one. not multiplying. <laughs> no, they're literally impossible to multiply. Um, they're multi-priming, because it's a prime number. Get it? Uh, do you get it? I thought that might joke. have been something to do with motorbikes. Um, but no, it's a numbers <laughs> joke. Yeah, it's a numbers joke. Um... But uh, but yeah, it's uh, for me. I'm probably gonna go with. Uh, mm, I'll probably go six, one lower. There's bits of it that are, you know, Cool Ride is a good song. Michelle Pfeiffer is good in it, um, but it is a fucking dirge, and the characters are dislikable, and it's just a bad sequel, isn't it? Yeah, and there are some really bad songs in it. <laughs> some extremely bad songs. Um, yeah, so so yeah, so that's our, our journey through the Greece cinematic universe. Our we, journey I, through I suppose, the Grease mega mix. <laughs> I suppose when they eventually release the other Grease stuff, we can cover that at some point. Yeah, for sure. Now we have a basis for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so <laughs> just quickly, Johnny Mnemonic was in a movie called Bachelor Party, which looks like the worst kind of 80s sex romp. Oh, dear. Um, a soon-to-be married man's friends show uh, throw him the ultimate bachelor party, starring Tom Hanks um, oh. and and Adrian Zmed. The, the 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 poster has a bunch of men bursting through a door, and then there's a lady's legs. Obviously, only the legs because women are nothing but objects of to eighty sex comedies. Um, so it's yeah, a Tom Hanks film that I haven't heard of, and that doesn't bode well. <laughs> That's usually. never a good sign, is it? Um, but we're not watching that next. So I did have multiple thoughts for for this episode, and I'm going to tell you two of them because I'm going to okay. leave them open to you for future episodes if you want to. So what the first one, and we did a little bit, we had a little chat about this, was the fanatic, the 
the movie where um but, uh, but and and the way that we could loosely tie it into this podcast it's the love between a man and an action movie star but yeah i feel like it's a step too far for us the to do crazy that. kind of love i did also think of xanadu the olivia newton john uh fantasy rollerblading musical yeah i've uh, never seen it which i've never seen which is apparently quite bad but has some absolute jams i was thinking mm, that would be quite good but i think i want to go highbrow next or uh. maybe maybe highbrow is not the right word but good um so we're going to continue on the 50s revival theme um but we're going to move it forward in time and we're going to watch 1998's pleasantville ah okay yes this is the black and white one that i haven't seen yes yeah um which yeah which uh, you've not seen i have seen it's um, one of your faves isn't it i feel yeah, like i've so, heard you talk about it before yeah i've not watched it in a very long time um but i really liked it when i was younger um so uh yeah so let's um let's let's watch pleasantville next nice that, that's a really good choice actually i feel like that's that's a nice departure from all the rubbish we've been li- watching recently well, that's what i thought, I thought <laughs> well i haven't I'd, seen it but you know p- I'd potentially some life into the the shit pieces that we've been covering recently <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is greece 2 a shit piece no it's not exciting it's, or interesting enough to be a shit piece it's not quite there it's tame it's too tame it's too tame yeah it could have been it could have really been a shit if tom cruise had been in it as a short king then it would have potentially been a shit piece. You imagine a, a, a young Tom Cruise just chewing the scenery in a 50s musical. Yeah, that, and singing outrageous have... songs about being a cool rider. Yeah, I think that could have worked, but um, yeah, it's it's far too tame to be a shit piece. Yeah, that's the shit piece verdict. It's a nay. <laughs> it's a nay, it's a nay. All right, well, thanks a lot for tuning in. We really, really appreciate it. Hope you're in enjoying watching some romantic films as lockdowns continue around the world wherever you are you know things are looking up things are gonna start to open up later this year but we will still be making this show forever so we do it because we love it and because we love you we do love you we love you more than danny zico loves um what's her name stacy stacy yep stacy stacy d stacy d look at me i'm stacy d that's the one. Listening to ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we hope you enjoyed Greece and or Greece 2. If you watch them, if you've never seen Greece, I think it is something you should see. Greece 2, you know, as I said, you can, you can take it or leave it. Greece 2, no. no. Just watch Cool Rider. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can um, find us on Twitter at Big Boys Don't Pod. You can email us, Big Boys Don't Cry Podcast at gmail.com. Get in touch if you have any thoughts or recommendations if you know any cool riders you know let us let us know we'd love to talk to them yeah do you know any cold riders or any Ooh. warm riders cold riders mm. yeah it's a, a good little, name for a band a little ice cream truck but it's um it's on a little motorbike <laughs> i would love that <laughs> tiny, that's tiny really cute in the back is like oh, sorry i've run out of all the ice cream so i can only <laughs> hold seven yeah, he's literally just got like a little little tub of Neapolitan in, in the little in the <laughs> baggy thing at the back scoop. of you. <laughs> yeah, no cones. <laughs> just hold out your palm. Take the ice cream. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm so bored of being at home that I probably would pay someone to bring that to me just to see it. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind. That'll be my next business venture. <laughs> All right. And um, please do rate the show, comment and subscribe, leave us a review, etc. You know, everyone says that on every podcast, so you know what to do. We'll leave it there. And we'll be back next week to talk about Pleasantville. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye.